Jim Jim keeping both of its top Chaz completely out of mana caught into a stun. There should be no way that they can bring this around in their favor. They're trying to battle out the rest of their hearts, but it won't be enough. At 37% dampening, Grumble strangle holds. Holding up the Pepe. Holding on to Pepe. Take a look at those faces because they are the first team to be going to BlizzCon. Way ahead on mana, Terror easily leaped up to him. Looney in tune and prison. Now Joe's in a lot of trouble. It's full of fear. Can Joe survive? He ah! needs to get away, and he gets taken out. ABC advances to BlizzCon, beating Enjoy Legion three to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for ABC. They are going to BlizzCon. Nerd Rage is trying to find the kill. Looney's doing everything in his power to deny it, but it is not enough. Evo are going to BlizzCon. What an insane game. And Joint Legion taken out by Evo. This is why Method are your reigning BlizzCon champions. Take a look at them. Look at Man, the pack your bags! You are going back to BlizzCon! Those are the four teams representing the European region at BlizzCon. Jackson, it's so awesome to see moments like that, and it's honestly why I fell in love with the game. These teams prepared so long throughout the year, and uh, watching all that hard work pay off was unbelievable. Yeah, it's great to see teams like that have success in the tournament, but it's also great to be back for another episode of Gladiator Summit. I'm Jackson Vizier of Blight, and once again joined by Elliot Van Rieke Van Sel. And as you may have figured out by now, today we're going to be diving in to the recent European Regional Championship. Now, as awesome as it is to see these teams battle it out on stage, our goal here at Gladiator Summit is to step away from the stage, out of the lights, and sit down with these players to get to know them better as people. ABC, let's start with them. These guys are full of big name players. You have Alex, Nixie, Asgaroth, Kara. Last year, they were literally just one game away from making it to BlizzCon. Right, and that storyline applies to Kara as well, who's a new addition to this team, but brings a ton of veteran experience to it. That being said, ABC is a team that nearly didn't even compete this year. Last year, it was a stressful year. I was in the middle of writing my master's thesis, which in Germany, especially for physics, is a lengthy process. And even with these circumstances, we went to regionals and we did very well. We missed the qualification to BlizzCon by one match. I wanted to quit after that, but my team um, wanted me to stay. So we stuck together and we kept competing and now we made it. It's really interesting hearing from Alec about how he basically almost walked away from the game. And you can tell he means the world to his teammates and they want to have him around. That being said, he is a huge asset in terms of recognizing nuances that allow them to be successful, especially moving on to BlizzCon. Alec, he's like, he's the, the brains behind the operation. He comes with, uh, comes with a lot of insight and watches the VODs, gives us some tips and strategies that he thinks we should try out. He always analyzes after every game, like how like what you can do better and what you can do worse. And I liked it about him. Like when I played with him for the first time, he was giving me advice and like I got better as I played with him. He's like, or, or that, but he's like always trying to find the new comps, the new talents, the new macros you could get. He helped us a lot. I'm really proud to be, to be playing with him. You can tell the tremendous respect that Alex's teammates have for him. Yeah, because as we'll see with our next team, the small subtleties can have a big difference, and that's exactly the case with Grumble. Grumble, consisting of Volkovich, Volterix, Jim Jim, and Eritros. These guys are no strangers to World of Warcraft, mostly running that Windwalker DK setup. They've had tremendous success with it on the past. Yeah, but despite being really high rate on the ladder, this team came in as the 12th seed, arguably an underdog, and this was also their first ever live tournament. Going there and was thinking, okay, this is gonna be Mm, difficult, a difficult experience for me. I, mean, I was extremely nervous and I was, uh, was a bit scared. And, like I have never done this before. I think it was uh, seeing all those those crowds, uh, all those people, uh, the lights, the sounds. This is this is scary for uh, some someone new like me. 
in their first game. They knocked down the first place seed, winning their second game very quickly as well, being the first team from the European region to actually qualify for BlizzCon. Everyone loves an underdog, but another reason to love Team Grumble is their name, which has a pretty interesting origin story. We started playing together with Volkovich and Voltarius uh, in middle of MOP. In this time, we faced a lot of Frost Mages, and as a DK, you are extremely vulnerable to snares and roots. Every time we face uh, Frost Mages, we both are pretty grumpy about it, so grumble is like uh, the sound that people would make when they are grumpy. It's not uh, rage or anything, it's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As a mage, hearing that, I am slightly offended, but mages are one of those classes you either love them or you hate them. Either way, I think Grumble definitely came prepared for them in this tournament. Absolutely. They found a class that was giving them a hard time and found a way to counter it. Running that Frost Death Knight Windwalker DK with that Delirium talent really limits the mages' mobility and allows them to train them down more effectively. But Grumble isn't the only team that found a composition that worked for them. Our next team up on the list found a comp, ran it to perfection, and now they're making it to BlizzCon. We're talking about Rockets Eclipse. Rockets Eclipse, those specialists we were talking about, you know, Nerd Rage, Cervantes, Leanne, and now Jamie coming in as that fourth, really rounding out their roster when they need it. They have a lot of compositions available to them, but nearly all of them are built around Cervantes. Now, this is a player who's actually qualified for BlizzCon twice before this, but this will be the first time we see him playing on the big stage. I qualified in 2015, but I couldn't go because one of my teammates uh, couldn't attend, so. We passed our spot. Last year too, I qualified to regionals. Like two years in a row, I qualified and I didn't go. It's like putting time into a thing and then you don't achieve something that's disappointing. I'm so thrilled for Cervantes that he finally has his opportunity to go to BlizzCon and really prove himself, but he's not the only one. In sitting down with his whole team, you can tell that making it to BlizzCon is a dream come true for them. Um, BlizzCon is so important because I think this is a dream of all WoW players, is to go to BlizzCon once in our life. Like, this is the best moment you can ever dream of. Well, it's BlizzCon. Uh, two weeks in the USA, BlizzCon is just uh, the achievement of, every, of everything. Every player would love, to, would love to go to BlizzCon. BlizzCon really is the ultimate goal for anyone that competes in World of Warcraft PvP. I think for Rockets Eclipse, a big part of their potential future success is going to rely heavily on that TSG setup they're known for. Definitely. I think that this is really interesting to hear them say that, especially when we've heard from so many other teams that Legion for them is about multi-comping and multi-classing effectively. And then you have Rockets Eclipse saying, we're just going to run TSG, we're going to play it perfectly, and we're going to win. We've been playing that for three seasons, that actually four seasons, nearly a year. So we. We know what, what do we have to do and to end the game, what do we have to do defensively, offensively. And him and Cervantes especially have great uh, synergy in their TSG. They've got probably thousands of games at this point, as it, their synergy is just completely on point. They basically never lose a mirror to anyone. It's one of the few cases where they can just play into any matchup and win because they play pretty much perfect the whole way through. Honestly, it's been a real treat watching Rockets Eclipse play that TSG basically from the start of cup number one all the way until regionals. I think how perfectly they play it, the thousands of hours, has really paid off for them this year. Yeah, they've done the work, they've made their dreams come true. But for one team, making it to BlizzCon isn't enough. We're talking about our returning champions, Method Triforce. Finally, Method Triforce, the back-to-back -back BlizzCon champions. This team consisting of Fabs, Botar, Swapsy, and now Blizzo. They are more dangerous than ever. Yeah, they've won two in a row, but they're still hungry. And I feel like they've been putting in the work behind the scenes, and I think that their performance in the most recent E-Regional Championship shows that. And I gotta chalk that up to their willingness to practice and prepare. For the past few months, uh, or weeks rather, I've been just focusing on the game, trying to get as prepared as possible for this event. Now, you obviously want to scout the teams you're going to face, so there's different things you can do. You can watch their streams, if they're streaming. They're every single North American Cup is also streamed, so you can get a general idea. Yeah, Jackson, this team is definitely no stranger to hard work. I feel like that's really been their theme and is a big part of their success in previous years as well. They definitely seem to be very confident moving into this tournament. And despite being back-to-back -back world champions, they're not really feeling the pressure. 
We know we were the best team for the past two years, like, without a doubt. We don't really feel um, pressure to win again because we know it takes luck, it takes practice, it takes good brackets, it takes a lot of things. If we win again, it will be like a new record and some, something that we'll be super proud of, but it, it's not a burden. Obviously, last year they won it as that three-man roster. This year, bringing on Blizzo as that fourth. You gotta be thinking though, he might be feeling a little bit nervous as that new addition. He had definitely not seen quite as much tournament experience as his teammates, but when the prior champions invite you to their team, they definitely have a lot of faith in their new teammate, Blizzo. Hey, Blizzo is the warrior for our team, also plays Windwalker and a few other classes. He is really the aggressive player on our team, making, uh, also taking part in the shot calling role. He has really high mastery on the classes he plays, so he has, really, he has a really good eye for making these plays that finish the game. As a fourth player, he adds basically time for us, since we don't have to play classes that he now plays, like Warrior, Windwalker and more classes. And so we can use that time to learn something else. It basically gives us chances, like variety to our, to our roster. Blizzo was a bit of a wild card for me going forward to the European regionals, but he really proved himself. He played exceptionally well, and I think he's a really good fit for this roster. Absolutely. I think all the teams that we've been talking about today from EU are definitely big time contenders, but we do need to mention, similar to NA, that there are some really popular teams that didn't make it this year. Yeah, there absolutely is. I mean, we can start with one of them, Northern Gaming. Uh, just talk about the big names on that team. You have Minpoike, you have Zumiyaki, you have Raikou, you have Waz. These guys are all-star players. Last year, after losing BlizzCon, they seemed more focused than ever. Most of the players of the European Regionals felt like they were the team to beat, and this was their year to win. Yeah, experience and effort, though, as we've seen, were also not enough for Enjoy Legion, right? They had two previous BlizzCon champions on their roster, Joe Fernandez and Looney, and they're not at BlizzCon either this year. Early on in the Cups, they did exceptionally well, and it just seemed seemed like they were going to steamroll the competition. They were the most dangerous team in Europe. Unfortunately, in regionals, they weren't able to make it. North America and EU both had some really big upsets, but we do have our teams locked in from both regions. Who are you keeping your eye on moving into BlizzCon? Yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. Grumble, one of those teams, they have the right composition, the Windwalker DK. They're very well versed in it. They surprised a lot of people at the European regionals, and what a story it would be if they actually went all the way and won BlizzCon, coming in at that 12th place seed. In addition to that, I mean, ABC, another roster very solid. We've seen them in the past. This year, they seem more focused and determined than ever. They're really going to bring it and have that mastermind. We've been talking about Alec on their team, and I think that's going to be a huge asset for them moving forward. Yeah, I loved hearing about the two stories from those teams, but the two teams that I'm going to be keeping my eye on are going to be Rockets Eclipse and, of course, the returning champions, Method Triforce. Now, both of these teams feature some stacked rosters of really good players with awesome composition. So I feel like if somebody's winning BlizzCon from EU, it's probably going to be one of those two. You know what, Jackson? I feel like Europe has an excellent shot this year at winning three years in a row. Uh, but that's going to do it for us here on Gladiator Summit. On behalf of myself and Jackson, thank you very much for joining us here today. Until next time, we'll see you in the arena.